I want to suck your blood. Or maybe just eat your shoe, cause you know, I need a soul. Get it, soul? Like the one on your shoe? Hiya! <laughs> oh Mitch, you are so funny. And so adorable. I am from the planet Funny. Take me to your leader. <laughs> on our planet, we need girls to kiss us to survive. Kiss me now or I will die. Mitch, we don't kiss boys. Yeah, boys have cooties. <laughs> I am not a normal boy. Your Earth's atmosphere is not compatible with my alien anatomy. Please do not let me perish. Must get a kiss. I'll give you a kiss. Um, excuse me? You heard me. You heard me. I said I'll give you a kiss. Well, um, okay, when? How about right now? In front of everybody. Well, I'm not going to let you perish, silly. <laughs> well, um, okay, maybe we can go behind the bushes. Nope. Right here, right now. Come on, I want to save you. You're not scared, are you? Me? Scared? No way. I've kissed plenty of girls. It's just, I need to get back to my planet for dinner. Boop, boop, boop. Meet you back here tomorrow. Nutrition comes first. Nope, it's now or never. Come on, let's do this. Lay one on me, spaceman. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a man whose bark has always been worse than his bite. My husband, the adorable and very funny, Mitch Baytel. My wife, everybody, give her a big hand. Thank you. Awesome. All right, that's enough. I know you're applauding for her because she's so hot. I've never had anyone applaud for me like that. So, and yes, uh, that is really my wife. She put a ring on it, bitches. Take a good look at that, boys. Yeah, that's what you call 100% tungsten. Get a good look, hater. <laughs> Six years I've been married to that girl, wow. And I'm still madly in love with my wife. I'm never gonna be one of those guys who's like, oh, the old ball and chain, I'm gonna pee on her face and kill her. I love my wife. My wife is an awesome human being. I love her so much. Her name is Jessica, by the way, and not only is she beautiful and smart, but she is my best friend and my hero. And in addition to these wonderful qualities, I am also proud to announce that my wife is a bad girl. <laughs> Love being married to a bad girl. Bad girls are awesome. I am always quite perplexed when a gentleman tells me that he would like to marry a good girl because good girls are the most hideous human beings on the planet. They are vile, wretched creatures who should die in fiery head-on collisions. Where do I begin? Okay, how about here? First of all, they're boring as hell. They have zero sense of humor. They will never send you good text pictures. If you ever dated a good girl, you will be awoken at four o'clock in the morning to the alluring ding of a text picture. You excitedly reach for the phone with one hand while your other hand prepares itself for active duty, <laughs> only to horrifyingly discover that she has awoken you from a delightful slumber so that you might see a picture of her stupid cat <laughs> with cake on its face. Like, you wrote me for this? I can't, I can't fondle myself to this. I'll give it a fair shot, but I don't foresee this having a happy ending. Why would you waste my data with this, you witch? 
And I knew that my beautiful wife was a bad girl immediately because she performed oral sex on me on our first date. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And good girls will not do that. And my wife is so embarrassed now. She's like, oh my God, you do not tell the audience that. They're gonna think I'm a whore. And I'm like, you know, honey, you are. It's kind of hard for us to run from that fact, sweetie. But, but you are my whore, and that's all that counts. I'm sorry, but I believe it is perfectly acceptable for a lady to be a whore, just as long as she's the one who makes the choice when and if she decides to be a whore. Whores. If, if a guy asks a lady to give him oral sex on the first date, he is a scoundrel, and she should flee immediately and find the company of a finer fellow. However, if a lady should decide, out of the goodness of her heart, that this is an activity she might be interested in pursuing, maybe as a reward for him being a gentleman. I think that's kind of sweet. <laughs> yeah. To me, it is simply the guy version of getting roses on a first date. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. How did you know I like these? That is... So sweet. Did my friends put you up to this? Those, those stinkers? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Am I blushing? I have to take a picture for Facebook. And it is also of much importance to me that all the beautiful ladies in attendance are aware of the fact I fancy myself a modern gentleman. I believe very strongly in equal rights, so after she completed this act of courage and tenderness, I did offer to return the oral favor. I was like, now it's your turn, pretty lady. However, what I soon learned is that women tend to get very anxious sometimes when they are on the receiving end of oral sex due to issues very dear to them. She's like, oh, no thank you. It is quite chivalrous of you to offer such a generous gift. But I did just meet you and I have to trust a man before I allow him to do that. I don't even know what that means. I, what, what, what are they scared while we're down there we're gonna steal something? Wake up the next morning, my vulva has vanished. <laughs> Dag damn it, somebody has done gone and snatched my vulva. I bet it was that shifty eye guy from last night. I knew I should not have trusted him. Now I wander this earth vulvaless. <laughs> and then she explained to me something of which I had not been previously privy to. She told me that the reason why women tend to feel trepidation during this intimate activity is due to hygienic concerns, which cause them to ponder if their taste is pleasing to one's palate. <laughs> I had no idea this was such a pressing issue. 
but apparently it does cause women quite a bit of consternation. So now, going forward with this newfound knowledge, whenever I perform oral sex on my gorgeous wife, also known as cunnilingus, I always make it a point to reassure her at regular intervals, thus she can relax and savor the entire experience. <laughs> I'm always like, oh my God, honey, this is delicious. It's as if I'm going down on Paula Dean. I have... I have no idea how this has been prepared, but I'm gonna have to request a doggy bag, cause this is too good to pass up such scrumptiousness. And while we're discussing this very sensitive issue, I would like to do a public service announcement for all our beautiful ladies in attendance this evening. I feel like maybe I can offer you some peace of mind regarding this delicate topic by informing you that you stress out about this absurd fact way more than is necessary. <laughs> I don't know how, but girls have somehow fallen under the misconception that we expect them to be fresh as a daisy. <laughs> we know this is not feasible. <laughs> that area tends to be highly trafficked at times. <laughs> so of course we allow for incidental wear and tear. And plus, um, this might be quite shocking to hear, but it is actually kind of a turn on when a girl has a little bit of kick. Yeah, yes, it's your essence. And it is quite feminine. Not too much, I should be very clear what I'm discussing. I, I did just realize I am a public figure, and as such, my comments hold a certain weight. I would hate to cause any ladies out there undue embarrassment, so please allow me to clarify. <laughs> uh, think about it like Tabasco. Just a splash. Gives you a refreshing zing, while too much will make your eyes water. However, if you are still concerned, ladies, here is how you can tell for yourself. I am going to reveal to you now, for the first time ever, the 100% guaranteed method you can always employ to be sure you are approved for public consumption. <laughs> and it's actually so simple. Um, if we venture down there and we remain down there, you are good to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just relax and enjoy, because trust me, we can't fake it. <laughs> when it turns, it really turns. If, if we go down and immediately make a round trip right back up and see some nonsense, like, I'd like to get to know you as a friend as well. You might then want to seek out a potion from the Witch of Summer's Eve. <laughs> Thank you, I am very funny. Right about now, I think you're all probably thinking how lucky my wife is <laughs> to be married to somebody as cultured and enlightened as myself. I have to tell you though, I consider myself the lucky one. My wife makes me a better human being. I don't think I really ever understood what a disgusting human being I was when I was single. 
Marriage has a way of making you confront things about yourself, and sometimes it's scary what you find. Case in point. <laughs> the day before Jessica and I got married, she sat me down and she's like, tomorrow we are going to be husband and wife. This means we should not have any secrets. And I was like, honestly, honey, that is the stupidest thing you've ever said. I don't know what they teach you in that yoga class you go to every day, but you have to trust me. The only reason you've agreed to marry me is because I keep secrets from you. <laughs> to which Jessica responds, no, sir. I say we lay it all down the line now so we are not caught by surprise later. Why don't you tell me the worst thing you have ever done and I will tell you the worst thing I ever did. And I was like, honey, you have no idea the tornado of filth that you are driving us into right now. And I am begging you, forget this nonsense. Let us go split a scone and speak of happier things. <laughs> and then Jessica says, well, I don't know if this will make you feel any better, mister, but I'm no angel either. I have done some pretty bad stuff in my past. I was like, what'd you do? <laughs> And she says, okay, I'll go first, but I want you to know it is the most terrible thing I have ever done. I've never told another human being, and I am ashamed of it every day of my life. I was like, cleanse that soul. <laughs> and Jessica says, one time I got very drunk, and I gave a guy a hand job for cocaine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I did not know what to say to that. Because <laughs> I once gave a guy a hand job for cocaine. <laughs> and I wasn't even drunk, and I am not proud of the fact that until that very moment, I didn't even know I was supposed to be ashamed of it. I, I, I just thought that's how you get cocaine. You, you give guys hand jobs. It's how my mom taught me and her mom taught her. I was like, honestly, honey, we're gonna be up all night if we're going to admit normal stuff, too. <laughs> She's like, do you still love me? I was like, oh my God, of course I still love you, honey. She's like, promise you're not gonna tell anyone? I was like, what, am I gonna go on stage and announce it to a bunch of strangers? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Girls and their trust issues. But excuse me people of Denver, Colorado. I would like to just state this fact. You should not keep secrets from your husband or your wife. You're just cheating yourself out of the best part of marriage, which is the fact that there's another human being in this big world who truly knows you and still loves you, despite all the gross stuff you did before and all the perverted stuff you would like to do going forward. <laughs> That's why I believe it is of utmost importance that if you are a single person now, whatever type of aberrant behavior you're engaging in, just be sure it's not the type of activity that will follow you around forever. For instance, ladies, do not do Pornography. I know it's too late for you, miss. <laughs> but everybody else, please learn from this gorgeous woman's tragic and smutty past and 
don't do pornography because it will haunt you forever and someone might recognize you in a comedy club one day and the person you're with is going to have to learn about it in front of a group of strangers. And I do have a DVD I would love for you to sign for me after the show. It's... If I'm being honest, it's an honor to perform for you, miss. You, you got me through some tough times on the road, and if I can put a smile on your face now, well, maybe that's my way of saying thanks. That's a nice moment we just had last week. And, and especially today's pornography, today's pornography is vile. I'm sorry, but porno was different when I was a child. It was sweet. It had a story. They told tales of heroism and valor that showcased the best America had to offer. A young wife needed her dishwasher fixed. But unfortunately, she lacked the funds to get the necessary repairs. Did she just lay down and die? Did she let dishes pile up relentlessly, attracting insects and vermin? I know what she didn't do. She didn't go crying to the government that they have to buy her a new dishwasher. Nope. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. She pulled herself up by her bootstrap. She blew that repairman, and she got that dishwasher fixed. Yes. Yes. Make America great again. And that night, her 12 illegitimate children <laughs> ate on sparkling flatware. <laughs> because the mother made a choice. She wasn't gonna be a victim anymore. <laughs> and that's the porno I remember. <laughs> porno that taught you about values and hard work. <laughs> How many people here remember porno day with your family when you were a kid? Oh my God, most of you. Do you remember? Do you remember how special that day was? Every Sunday afternoon, the whole family would gather around in the living room. Dad would pop a porno in the old VCR. You remember those? The whole family would masturbate furiously and whoever finished first would get an extra piece of caramel at dinner and a star on the fridge. Oh my God. Do you remember how proud you were of that stupid star? Uh, it just it goes by so fast. Those, those were the good old days when family meant something and everyone ate supper together. And then we wonder why our kids today are raping their cats and smoking their Tide Pods. It's... A breakdown of family, people. Are you aware of the fact that in the United States right now, we have a 60% divorce rate? More than half. We are raising a nation of crybabies who just give up when the going gets tough. It's true. Nothing will ever come before my marriage. If my wife asked me for a divorce, I would push her off a cliff. Because uh -huh. I would want her to know, hey, Missy, you didn't marry a quitter. <laughs> because one day, folks, when it's all said and done, your husband or your wife are going to be the only thing you have left in this miserable world. And believe me, I understand marriage can be tough. As much as I adore my gorgeous bride, I will admit that there are certain challenges marriage offers that maybe I underestimated a tad. Off the top of my head. Um, that whole not being able to have sex with another human being for the rest of your life part. Not the biggest fan of that clause. <laughs> and I want to state crystal clear for the record, I am 100% faithful to my wife and proud of this fact. However, 
I would be lying if I did not admit that there were times where I find myself daydreaming about looking at another girl's vagina. And, and, and you stop. And the, and the thing, and the thing that I find so frustrating about this fact is that I am not even tired of my wife's vagina. I adore Jessica's vagina. I could prove it to you by the 500 pictures I have of it in my phone, which if you see me after the show, I'll send you one a day for a month for a nominal fee. This offer is not valid in Oklahoma or Arkansas. Regardless, I'm sure you will agree, it is a stunning vagina. I can gaze at it for hours or while away a lazy afternoon reading a poetry on a quiet hillside. <laughs> but I guess the way I look at it is this. When one goes into a museum and they gaze upon a beautiful painting for the first time, one does not come to the absurd conclusion then to never ever gaze upon another beautiful painting. <laughs> Quite the opposite. You become inspired to seek out more beautiful paintings, sometimes paying exorbitant fees to add a certain painting to your collection. <laughs> Other times, maybe you start thinking you would be interested in seeing two paintings at the same time, and... <laughs> I don't know, maybe you start hoping that since your birthday is coming up in seven days, your wife might bring home her best friend's painting, and you could both explore that painting in depth, because maybe that painting has a bad problem with OxyContin, and you, you can just stick that nasty little painting in a cab afterwards, and that slutty little painting will learn its lesson about walking around in a thong when she knows you're married. I'm sorry, I don't even know where I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah. That shocked even me. That went into a dark place. I apologize, you deserve better than that. I think what I'm trying to say is that while one can find themselves very happily married to one person, this does not mean that on occasion they might not find themselves attracted to another person. Case in point. The other day, my beautiful wife was getting her makeup done at the cosmetics counter of our local mall. I believe it was a Tuesday. And I do have to be honest that the girl who was doing my wife's makeup had something about her that I found captivating. I guess you could say she had a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but... If it means camel toe, she had a lot of je ne sais quoi. She had an overabundance of je ne sais quoi. One could easily lose their coffee mug in her je ne sais quoi. <laughs> and though I fought valiantly to turn away, the mighty fury of the je ne sais quoi held me its unwilling prisoner. I did find it a little bit humorous that later that evening, coincidentally, my wife asked me, hey, do you think that makeup girl was pretty? And I could hold my head up high and say, honey, I never even looked at her face. <laughs> I believe it is normal to be attracted to other people while not acting on it is to me the greater sign of love. I know my wife is attracted to other men. I'm not an idiot. As a matter of fact, last night my wife and I went to a bar and it was quite obvious she was attracted to the bartender. And I get it, he was an exquisite looking human being. He's like 6'4 with huge muscles and these beautiful blue eyes that I don't even know the logistics of this, but when he looked at me, I felt pretty. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but every time we made eye contact, I felt like a 15-year-old Mexican girl at her quinceanera. 
I just wanted to dance and celebrate my youth and beauty. And it was so obvious my wife liked him because my wife is the cheapest human being I've ever met. And after he gave us our drinks, she said to me, make sure you give him a very big tip. I was like, honey, why don't you just take off your panties and rub them all over his face? Because that would be even a little more subtle than what I'm seeing right now. And I'm not mad at her. I understand. We all like to touch new stuff. It's part of being human. Touching new stuff is fun. When I was a single man and I would get to touch a new vagina, it was a wonderful day. I do take solace in the fact that it was a rare occurrence. Girls will usually not let you just touch their vaginas. There's a lot of legwork involved. Every girl has a list of rules and requirements that a gentleman has to first satisfy before they are granted vagina-touching privileges. Some girls have a very long and extensive list. Other girls have a much shorter and flexible list. And <laughs> Personally, I prefer those women, madam. I find their company so much more agreeable I do hope you interpret it as the compliment I meant it as. <laughs> the only thing that I ever found distasteful is when a woman would nefariously use her vagina to titillate a man when in fact she had no intentions of consummating the relationship. I believe the technical term for this, as defined by Webster's, is cock tease. From the Latin, cock hardest, no uses, me so saddest. <laughs> and it is a sad day. A sad day indeed when a gentleman has the misfortune of crossing paths with one of these vile creatures. Causing confusion, disorientation, and new studies suggest links to colon cancer and hair loss. <laughs> Sorry about your predicament, sir. <laughs> and I am sad to say that every woman has been guilty of this gruesome offense at one time or another, including, yes, even my beautiful wife. Case in point. The other day, Jessica was doing some routine household cleaning. I believe it was a Thursday. <laughs> and I walked by the kitchen to find her on her hands and her knees, scrubbing the kitchen floor. And the attire she had chosen for this activity was nothing but a tiny pair of panties and absolutely no top. And my penis became engorged with blood. causing what we refer to as an erection. <laughs> and what this erection means is that she wants it. <laughs> it's, that's not even a joke, people. That's just basic sex ed. No, no, and you know something, I want to say this. It makes me a little sad that we're all adults and we still can't discuss this without giggling like we're in kindergarten, for God's sakes. <laughs> Seriously, how are we supposed to expect more from our children if we don't expect more from ourselves? <laughs> think about that on the way home, okay, Denver, Colorado? <laughs> so I walk into the kitchen and I go, excuse me, dear, I see you're in the middle of your housework, but I have brought you fortunate news. <laughs> It's my erection. <laughs> and since you say that I am not spontaneous enough, we're gonna spice things up today, and I'm gonna use this erection on you right here on the kitchen floor, so you don't even have to stop scrubbing and fall behind on your chores. <laughs> To which Jessica responds, no. 
I want to do something even better. <laughs> what? <laughs> and she said, I want you to masturbate for me. I was like, that is not better. <laughs> And she said, no, trust me, it will be hot. And I was like, no, you trust me. No guy has ever been sitting at home masturbating thinking, wow, it don't get better than this. Thank God I don't have to deal with all those wet, beautiful vaginas getting in my way and slowing me down. After this, I will have a cold TV dinner and laugh at all the idiots who do not have it as good as I do right now. <laughs> and, and she said, no, I'm gonna be there. I was like, oh. I, 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 still, I still don't follow, honey. Um, just help me out with this. What are, you, what are you going to be doing while I'm engaging in this super hot activity? To which Jessica replies, I'm going to cheer you on. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know, honey. <laughs> Honestly, I would rather just stick it in your butt. <laughs> and you can boo me if you want. It's called negotiating, and it is a very important part of a successful marriage. <laughs> Ladies, on the subject of masturbation, I would like to say this. We are fully and painfully aware you can do it just as good, if not better, yourself. However, the same is not applicable to us. Our hands are a frightful substitute for the real thing. This is why we spend the majority of our teen years sticking our penises in warm laundry and assorted baked goods in some sort of pathetic attempt to find anything that will mimic the real thing. Alas, soon we come to the inevitable sad conclusion nothing will ever come close to a real woman moaning and saying your name and talking dirty in bed. There is nothing hotter than a girl talking dirty in bed. And that is one of the myriad of benefits you receive when you marry a bad girl. <laughs> they have filthy mouths. Good girls will never talk dirty in bed. And in fact, if they say anything, it's usually quite hurtful. Like, if you get that on me, I'll sue your ass, sir. That's not helpful, that's litigious. I will say this, though. For dirty talk to be effective, it has to be real. There is nothing worse than faked or forced dirty talk. This is one of the reasons I have never been a fan of prostitutes. The first reason is they refuse to take my Costco Visa card. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If I'm not getting points, you ain't getting this dick, bitch! <laughs> and the other thing is, I've just never been a fan of fake sex. If a girl's not really into it, I find it awkward and uncomfortable. And I am aware there are men who frequent prostitutes who say, oh, well, my girl won't do the stuff that those girls do. And to that, I say, boulder dash. Boulder dash on you, sir. <laughs> because if I have learned anything in my lifetime, it's that every girl has, deep within them, a real inner prostitute. <laughs> and when they feel comfortable and safe with you, they will let her out to play. But be warned, once she comes out of her slutty little cave, there's no getting her back in. And she is a vulgar little scamp. My wife has gotten too comfortable with me now. 
My wife will say things in bed regularly that I have to stop and say, honey, maybe don't say that again. <laughs> that was disgusting. No, it didn't turn me on. It makes me want to shower. Where did you, where did you even learn that? Did you do time in the state pen? I don't know about. I sure hope Jesus didn't hear that potty mouth. Sometimes, honey, I would like to just make love and not discuss all the stuff that can fit in my butt. Other times, my wife will say something in bed that is just downright unrealistic. Case in point. The other day, the wife and I were engaged in a vigorous session of lovemaking. I believe it was a Tuesday. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I felt that undeniable tingle that we're all aware of that alerts us to the fact that our orgasms will soon be approaching. So, without a second to lose, I exclaimed, Oh my God, I am going to come which is what I announce when I am about to ejaculate so that she can make the proper preparations. Because yeah. in the old days, I used to just yell out, semen, and she said that was creepy, so. So I think she's got some unresolved stuff anyway, but anyway, so. I came up with my own saying. Feel free to use it as well. I don't mind paying it forward. You just say, oh my God, I am going to come. It's clear, it's concise, and most times I find it adequately conveys the gravity of the situation. <laughs> However, um, this one time in this story I'm recounting to you right at the moment of truth, I exclaimed, oh my God, I am going to come. And Jessica replies, don't. <laughs> I want to F you all night long. I was like, no, I think now is the perfect time. <laughs> I, I do uh, appreciate your kind offer. Uh, but I do have a lot of yard work I need to get to, and a mountain of Downton Abbey episodes I have to catch up on. So if it's all the same to you, now would work out perfectly for me, thank you. I honestly believe that women in the back of their sweet little heads think that if we just try harder, <laughs> we can magically last longer and I am so sad to be the one who has to relay this horrible news to you. But what you've been getting now is us trying our absolute hardest. <laughs> you, you are by far getting the diamond package of what we have to offer. If we were not trying, uh, let me paint a picture for you. Uh, this is what, would, what sex would be like if we did not try. Uh, we would get in maybe an inch and be like, that was delightful. <laughs> Bravo, I'm gonna go sleep in the den for three days. Uh, help yourself to the laughing cow cheese wedges in the refrigerator. <laughs> that would be sex if we did not try. Now, don't get me wrong, an experienced sailor, such as myself, <laughs> can definitely keep the ship floating in calm water, maybe a tad bit longer, but no matter what your skill set, once that tingle we've spoken of rolls in, we are not captain of the ship anymore. <laughs> well, we've been boarded by pirates. And, and a hell of a lot of good men have to walk the plank. <laughs> Sometimes it's just a sailor or two. Other times it is the entire fleet, but 
Regardless, afterwards, the vessel will not be seaworthy for a few hours. <laughs> and I know why women get confused. It's totally understandable, ladies. It's because girls have their own tingle as well. However, ladies, your tingle is so opposite from our tingle. <laughs> You can't, you can't compare tingles. Because <laughs> when a girl has her tingle, that means she's about 10 minutes away. <laughs> and she now needs absolute silence. <laughs> Whatever you happen to be doing at that precise moment must not vary in intensity or speed. It's, it's like piloting the Mars rover. If you move, if you move anything a fraction of an inch in the wrong direction, she's like, mission aborted, you ruined it. Why did, why did you move? I, I, I have to know what was so goddamn important that you had to move. I'm like, I needed to breathe and and my therapist says, you're a bully. And, and if I have to breathe, honey, I, I have to put myself first because without oxygen, I will surely perish. <laughs> and, and if you want us to last longer, ladies, please help us to help you. Let us do the position choosing. Women need to learn that once they have given us the go-ahead for sexual intercourse, behind our seemingly dumb gaze <laughs> is the brain hard at work hatching a strategy <laughs> to help ensure that both parties share a rewarding experience <laughs> that they can look back on for a lifetime. <laughs> However, when you frivolously change the plan on us at the last second, it is both rude and frankly offensive <laughs> to then blame us for the tragic outcome. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> the other day, the wife and I were about to engage in what I hoped was going to be a vigorous session of lovemaking. And was it? it was a Wednesday, thank you. <laughs> It was a Wednesday, thank you, I forgot about that. <laughs> and it was a Wednesday. And right before we were about to start, uh, my wife has the audacity to announce, I want to start out in doggy style. I was like, oh, good plan. Uh, do you have any ideas what we're gonna do after those five seconds are over? <laughs> Maybe we can do a puzzle or go into town and see an old-fashioned picture show. <laughs> She's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, do you though, honey? Do you really have no idea what I'm talking about? Because you're one of the most brilliant people I've ever met, so I'm sorry, but I find it just a bit suspect that you don't know that nobody starts out in doggy style. <laughs> the mother of all positions. Dogs don't even start out in doggy style. <laughs> Since the beginning of creation, it has been accepted etiquette that when a man and a woman engage in coitus, they begin in the missionary position, giving the man ample time to prepare himself for the ancient ritual of doggy style. <laughs> Make sure you have enough oxygen. Make sure everything has been lubricated sufficiently. <laughs> Go over your notes from last time. <laughs> Don't go so fast. Keep your finger away from her butthole.
Let's get this baby up in the air. <laughs> and when we finally do arrive at the vaunted doggy style position, ladies, relax. Help out. Pull your own hair once in a while. Give us <laughs> just a little time to savor the majesty of doggy style. My wife gets out of control. She's like, pull my hair, grab my hips, slap my ass. I'm like, do you want me to vacuum while I'm back here? I could, I could vacuum if you'd like, honey, because this is more chores than I've had since I was 12 years old. What, you know, why don't you just send me back a list of everything I need to accomplish in the two and a half minutes I'm back here, and I'll tape it on your back and check off each item as I complete them. It makes me irritable. You know what doesn't make me irritable? is Denver, Colorado. I love you so much. Um, I do, have, I do have a few more minutes with you. First, I would like to say something very important to me. Uh, if we have any good girls in the audience tonight, I would like to apologize if I have in any way offended you. That was not my intention. My intention was simply to point out what a horrible human being you are <laughs> and, and, and to inspire you to drive into a wall tonight. Now, having said that, having said that, I now want to admit, in the interest of fairness, that being married to a bad girl does come with one small disadvantage. That disadvantage is, if you're going to marry a bad girl, you have to be prepared to make peace with the fact that eventually you will learn that you are a very boring human being. <laughs> I used to think I was the most exciting individual alive. And then I married Jessica, and I realized I am quite a dullard. This last story I leave you with tonight is a true story. Only the names have been changed to protect my wife. <laughs> it was the evening, approximately seven months ago, when I had just completed a stellar show. I believe it was a Saturday. <laughs> and after the show, Jessica and I were walking back to our car when we were approached by a very gorgeous female who asked us if we had plans for the evening. I told her we did not. <laughs> Mentioned that my birthday was coming up in 178 days. <laughs> and asked her why this was of interest to her. To which she responded, well, my husband and I are swingers, and we're having a group of couples back to our house for an orgy, and we thought it would be fun to invite you to. And I was like, oh my God, that is so sweet. <laughs> and I am so honored that you would think of us. Uh, I'm forced to decline because I just realized we're normal. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting us. Enjoy your orgy. I would shake your hand, but I do not want to get gonorrhea. <laughs> Here's where the story takes an interesting twist. Do you know that point in every single relationship when you realize that you and your significant other might not be on the same page about every topic? <laughs> Jessica suddenly chimes in, how many couples are gonna be there? <laughs> like, yeah, because we have a five-couple minimum. What kind of, <laughs> kind of stupid question is And will gluten-free snacks be available? Because we, we have stomach issues, so we make it a policy to only attend orgies that can adhere to our strict dietary requirements. And then Jessica continues, uh, well, how close do you guys live to the club? And it was at this point I decided that my wife and I should maybe have a private conversation. <laughs> this is 100% true. I take Jessica aside, I said, honey, I don't know if you really understand what we're being invited to. Uh, it's an orgy. And uh, 
Uh, the way an orgy works is a group of very disturbed individuals, many of them ex-convicts and abusers of puppies and seals, get together in a room and they, they form a circle. And then a seven foot naked black man gets in the middle and he blows a Viking horn and all hell breaks loose. People, people start raping cats and smoking Tide Pods and this might be hard for you to hear, honey, but they start having sex with each other's husbands and wives and we will be expected to partake in this sickness. And if we decline, they will string us up by our feet and they will gangbang our eyeball sockets. <laughs> These are dangerous people. <laughs> to which Jessica replies, that's not true. You don't even have to have sex at an orgy. You can just watch if you want. I was like, oh, my bad. Uh, I guess I had wrong information on that. Um, it's so interesting. Do you know what I find more interesting though is when you became an expert on the subject of orgy etiquette. To which Jessica responds, because I once participated in an orgy. And I was like, oh my God, that's the missing puzzle piece. That's so, that's so here I am yapping on about orgies and you're actually a veteran. That's so <laughs> funny how that happens. Well, I guess my first thought is you may want to tell your second husband that information. <laughs> I don't know, maybe a few months before the marriage so he'll have time to seek out the intensive therapy he'll need to deal with that fact. <laughs> to which Jessica responds, Stop being such a drama queen. <laughs> We're gonna go. I know you, you'll have fun. I was like, no. I know you, you'll have fun. <laughs> Everybody will be quite excited. You're at the orgy, dear. Nobody's gonna be like, ew, who brought that in? Get it out of here. Don't orgies have standards anymore? This is an outrage. I'm gonna write a letter to the orgy board. I said, but I can promise you more than a few people at the orgy will be puzzled by my attendance. Some confused girl is gonna be like, why is the pizza guy humping my leg? He's got an odd look on his face. He keeps yelling out semen the whole time. <laughs> and it's creeping all of us orgy goers out. <laughs> to which Jessica responds, oh my God, Mitchell, you always do this. You make up stuff in your head that has no basis in reality. Why don't we just go? And if you don't like it, we'll just leave. I was like, right, because that won't be too uncomfortable. <laughs> Excuse me, I think my wife is on the bottom of this pile. <laughs> Blonde girl, yeah, could you tell her we gotta get going? <laughs> yeah, we have church tomorrow, so... <laughs> we're gonna have to skedaddle. <laughs> oh no, no rush, let her finish up and uh... Tell her I'm gonna pull her car around. I have her purse when she's done. Thank you very much, Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you. I know, I know I am hysterically funny, I understand this, uh, but I would like to say something just heartfelt now for my beautiful wife. I've been doing this new act for about five years now. When I met Jessica about eight years ago, I started to write jokes about her and she said there was one rule, the rule was that it had to be funny. And so she enables me to do all these jokes because she's so wonderful. So I want to give my wife a big thank you for letting me do all those jokes. I told her a long time ago, 
that I wouldn't do any jokes without her blessing. And she's been very sweet to give me her blessing on all of them. And I know that she thinks every joke I do is hysterically funny. <laughs> give me a second, give me a second. Except one. There's one joke in my act that my wife has always hated. And I'm gonna give her the opportunity now on my special to tell the world, what is the one joke in my act that you hate? I did not give a guy a hand job for cocaine. <laughs> There. I did. I actually did. So that's true. Thank you very much, Denver, Colorado. My wife, thank you so much for coming out. Brandon's our director. Brandon, can you get me a camera down here by any chance? Yeah, okay, good. Come on over here. Now I want everybody to be nice and quiet because this is something I noticed. There's a girl passed out right over here. Shh. Don't wake her. Did you like the show? <laughs> what part do you remember? What was your favorite part? Everything up until you passed out. What's your name? Sarah. How about a big hand for Sarah who passed out during my special? I thought I was killing and then I looked over at you and realized Sarah thought Kevin Hart was gonna be here apparently. <laughs> like, I don't know who this guy is, but I wish he'd stop talking about his wife's vagina. Wake me when it's over. <laughs> You're gonna be able to show that to your kids one day.